Hello class, welcome to chapter 6, Applications of Integration. And here we look at volumes using cylindrical shells. A quick recap, we saw volumes using the disk method, where when you slice the, the solid, you get circular disks. Then we saw the washer method, where when you slice the solid, you get circular disks with hole in the middle. Remember, we are only describing it, but the uh, way we define them is just we just use the word washer. Washer itself means it's a circular disk with a hole in the middle. Okay, so there's this disk method and the washer method. Now we look at cylindrical shells. So we call this the shell method. And if you did the cross section, you get cylinders. And you know, the cylinder is a, is a known shape, so we can use the formula related to cylinder. Let's walk through these images. Now, in the first uh, image, you, uh, we have the function y equals 3x minus x squared, which is a parabola, and that's a shaded region. And notice how it is uh, not rotated about the x-axis because it's actually hugging the x-axis. It's being rotated about the uh, x equals negative 1. That is the vertical line about which it's rotated, not the y-axis, but f further away from the y-axis. So there will be a gap, as you can see, right? You see this gap here? So this is going to rotate, and that's what you see here. This is the gap because you are rotating it uh, away from the uh, x-axis. Um, if, if it was with the x-axis, that would look uh, more like a... Uh, like a washer situation. But here what happens is because of the gap and if you were to slice this looks like a cake right like a bundt cake. Right? So you're not slicing it sideways you're slicing it from the top. So if you are slicing it from the top you're punching it through the middle we get a cylindrical shape when you pull out right and that's what you see here in orange. That's a cylindrical shape. And so if it's a cylindrical shape then we can use the volume of one shell which is a cylinder The cross section is a cylindrical shell. Therefore, uh, the whole idea is if I can, um, you know, find the volume of each shell, and you can slice as many shells, right? If I define the volume of all these shells and add them up, I get the volume of this um, of this solid. Now, what also happens is if you, uh, again, allow the limit for n to approach infinity and take the Riemann sum, that gives you the exact volume. So, what we see then is for the method of shells, the volume will be the volume of... Uh, let's say one cylinder right will be the area of the cross section as we saw before times the height the thickness right i'm just trying to derive this formula for us so you have um, the cylinder The area of the cross section, the cross section would be a, show that here, would be a washer, isn't it? The area of the cross section. So if it's a washer, it's the outer area minus the inner. So let's call capital R as the outer radius and the small r as the inner radius times h is pi times r squared minus r squared times h r plus h i'm sorry r plus small r and capital r minus small r difference of squares 
so volume of one cylindrical shell uh, comes out as pi times r plus r times r minus r times h. What we do is uh, we do a, a slight manipulation where we multiply and divide by 2. Okay. And then we move the, the positioning of this 2 around. So what I want to do is uh, I'll bring this 2 over here. It doesn't matter, right? They're all being multiplied, so it can be uh, multiplied in any position. I, there is a reason why I want to do this. Because what happens is, if I did half of r plus r, that's nothing but your average radius, right? This is your average radius. r minus r, outer radius minus inner radius, will actually give you the thickness of the cylinder. Thickness of the cylinder. And so uh, you, you can think of uh, rewriting this as 2 pi times average radius times height, or in this case, thickness. That doesn't look right. Times the height. That means you can rewrite this again as average radius some ck or xk like we say times thickness is coming from the function ck i'm sorry the thickness is actually a delta thickness is delta, delta x and the height is the height of the graph which is your f of ck okay. so the volume is 2 pi ck f of ck delta x this is for one shell so if you did it for all the shells then the total volume will be using the Riemann again I'm skipping those steps because we've seen this many times in other derivations so if I added all these shells the volume of all these shells and then took the limit of n approaching infinity that would be 2 pi CK, F of CK, delta X. And we know that this becomes the integral from A to B, 2 pi. The CK will be an X, right? Because it's some, it's CK is one particular uh, position of X in the kth interval. But here we are looking at any X because that's what happens with the uh, limit of the Riemann, the integral takes up the x and it's f of x, not that particular ck, and delta x becomes dx. Okay. This is with respect to x. But then um, you know that this will be when revolved around y axis. This is interesting because if you come back here to this, to this uh, diagram here, See here, we are going about the y-axis, so we are staying horizontal. We are sitting on the x-axis. Can you see that? The, the cylinder is sitting on the x-axis, even though we are rotating about the, the vertical line, a vertical axis. That's why it's written with respect to x, even though we are revolving around the y-axis, because the shell is sitting horizontally on the x-axis. And so it will be the other way around. Oops. Other way around, if you're doing it for the y, you can write f of y or g of y if you want to differentiate it. And here it will be when it's revolved around the x-axis. In which case the shell will be sitting, you know, parallel to the uh, y-axis. It will be sitting on the y-axis, so it's sideways. Let's uh, take a problem and uh, work through it. We've got these two formulas now.
find the volume of the region included by y equals square root of x, x equals 1 and x equals 4 when revolved about the y axis. So we've seen this problem before, that's why I bring them again so you can see it in this context. So we have um, y equals square root of x and then we have x equals 1. We call that as x equals 1. And then we also have x equals 4. These are vertical lines. x equals 4. And we are rotating about the y axis. So this will be our region. And you're rotating about the x, uh, I'm sorry, about the y axis. So you are going to have your cylinder sit parallelly, right? Sit on the x axis. So if you don't act actually have to draw the 3D figure, but you know that uh, this setup will lead to a shell about the y axis. So the method of shells is what kicks in now. And we have. Uh, in fact, this will be 1, this will be 4. You can find their corresponding values, right? This will be, this is y equals root x. So when x is 1, this will be 1. When x is 4, this will be 2. So you can fix all those things. All right. So when it's about the y-axis, we do it with respect to x in this case. So it's going to go from 1 to 4. 2 pi x, this is part of the formula. I'll take you back here quickly. 2 pi x is part of the formula. f of x is where you substitute for the function. So the function is square root of x dx. As simple as that. 2 pi, you know, this is x times x power half dx. I'll bring the 2 pi out. 1 plus half, so that's x power 3 over 2 dx. And then it'll be x power 5 over 2 because 3 over 2 plus 1. That will go up as 2 over 5, which will be 4 pi over 5. 4 power 5 over 2, 1 power 5 over 2. 4 power 5 over 2, so that will be square root of 4 power 5. Square root of 4 is 2, 2 power 5 is 32. 32 minus 1. So that's 31 times 4, which is 124 pi over 5. This is using the shell method. You can see how easy that is. The derivation seemed a little uh, different because you had to do some manipulation to get the answer, but it's, it's really neat. Okay. We'll do another one, a little different type. Find the volume of the region included by y equals x and y equals x squared around the y axis. Well, we can draw the graph, but again, remember, I'd like to know the bounds before I draw the graph, so I'll know where to shade from what to what. So we'll say uh, limits of integration requires us to set the equations equal to each other. This means x squared minus x plus 0. This implies that x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 1. Okay, so it's between 0 and 1. We need to figure out which one is the top function, which one is the bottom function. Uh, that, that shouldn't be uh, too hard because we just can graph it at this point. Uh, so when you uh, do the graph, you know, your uh, parabola is x squared, so that's pretty much easy. And then your uh, y equals x squared is a line like that. But then it's going from 0 to 1 because that's where they meet. And so this will be the shaded region. And remember that we're rotating about the y axis. So we're going about the y axis. So, uh, you know, it's, it's basically a shell problem, uh, but you can also see it as. Um, you know, a washer problem if you were uh, 
viewing it in that in that way because you're trying to find the area between the two curves and then uh, the outer radius inner radius that situation kicks in so I'll just say shell problem becomes washer problem partly I say partly because what happens is we um, always for the shell problem we uh, usually or at least usually we've only seen one problem but we have uh, the, um, the the shaded region hugging the x-axis right when it's hugging the x-axis it's very clear which function we're using f of x is clearly the root x but in this example it is not hugging the x-axis right it's a region uh, between uh, two two curves and because of that that's where the washer problem comes in partly wherein we say well this is volume uh, in terms of shell shell problem a to b 2 pi x f of x dx but this f of x is not so straightforward that's what we're trying to say this f of x is supposed to be the region between the two curves that's going to be top function minus the bottom function that will be the adjustment in terms of washer so you are using shell problem and bringing in an adjustment this is all you know what do I say it, it's intuitive in the sense that you are trying to understand the uh, the meaning of this whole rotation right this rotation it has to give you a shell it's giving you a shell if it is uh, hugging uh, the uh, x-axis with no problem using the function. But because of this um, uh, this region here that is trapped between two curves, we are modifying, I'll say a to b as 0 to 1, 2 pi x, we have that. But f of x will be the top function, which is uh, our line y equals x minus the bottom function which is our parabola x square dx so the top function will be the line and the bottom function is the parabola and that my friends is where we insert the washer situation into a shell problem so it's 0 to 1 2 pi x squared minus x cubed dx. In fact, we could bring the 2 pi outside. And x squared dx integrated and apply the limits 0 to 1. Okay, that's 2 pi times 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4. Simplify all that, that's 1 over 12, 2 pi, so it's pi over 6. Volume is pi over 6. So this was a slightly different problem where we had to adjust things a little bit to help us to get uh, what we want. Find the volume bounded by x equals negative y squared plus 6y and x equals 0 around x-axis. So to kind of roughly, um, you know, draw this, uh, this curve, you know that this is all switched around, right? Meaning x and the y are switched around. So which means this is like a parabola, but then it's uh, like C-shaped. If it's C-shaped, I would have had a positive y squared to see it like this. If it's a negative y squared, it's inverted C shape. So I know my graph will be like this. This is all uh, informed by algebra. So, so I'm thinking, well, this must be like, like this, something like this. And you know, x equals zero is your y, uh, yeah, y axis. So something like this. And um, I'm just thinking, will it go? Uh, probably. I'm just thinking that this must actually be 
Now if I were to sketch this, you can see that the X and the Y are switched around. So, um, you know, if it's switched around, your parabola will be like a C. But that will be true if it was just Y squared plus 6Y. But this is negative Y squared, so it's going to go around like this, inverted C. If I were to sketch this, then um, the graph could look like this. Okay. And... Um, you know, the vertical, the y-axis is your x equals 0. And we're rotating this about the x-axis. So you can think of uh, this being a shaded region because that's how it's bounded. And uh, we are, uh, if you were rotating about the x-axis, you get the cylindrical shell. Okay, that generates a cylindrical shell. So keeping that in mind, I need to find the bounds, right, the limits of integration. And I need these limits of integration in terms of y, because remember, that is how it is. If it's around the x-axis, it's all with respect to y, okay? So I'll make a quick note of that here. Cross-section is equal to a cylindrical shell. And uh, if that's the case, then we do it with respect to y when rotating about the x-axis. So when revolving about the x-axis. Now, uh, limits of integration would be where I set the two equations that are, that are written in terms of x, right? That are solved for x, I should say. The equations are solved for x, therefore they're written in terms of y. Solve this, and then you uh, have y squared minus 6y equals 0, so that I have the y positive. Now, if I were to graph this accurately, I, I, did the, I got this graph from my uh, graphing calculator, so I was able to sketch it correctly. But if you were to do it all um, manually, you would f first find the limits of integration so that you know it's going to go from 0 to 6, so that you know that's the region you are shading. So you would do the other way around if you were using the um, using algebra to inform the limits. Okay, that means we will now have the shells going. The volume would be from C to D, two pi y. f of y dy, right? c to d 2 pi y. The function is negative y squared plus 6y. Remember again, this is hugging the y-axis, so we could directly use the f of y. If it was not hugging the y-axis, uh, but we were supposed to rotate around the x-axis, then we would be doing the washer um, style in, where we do the right function minus the left function. We would have done that. We didn't have to do that here just because it was hugging the y-axis. In fact, we are indirectly using right function minus the left function. The right function would be this purple function. The left function would be the x equals 0. So right function minus 0 will just be the right function, right? That is the reason why uh, you don't see that effect here, so we directly use the function. But uh, in, in all these cases in the background, you do have the uh, right minus left or the top minus bottom. Even when it's hugging the x-axis, top minus bottom would be become top minus the zero uh, situation. Anyways, uh, we have direct substitution, which is helpful. Plus 6y squared dy. Oh, I kept uh, the c to d. We know the c to d is actually 0 to 6. So 0 to 6. Well, apply all that.
and here I can uh, kind of see that these two go away. It will be two times six cubed. That's top function minus. Again, I um, allow uh, let you do the calculation in between. This comes out to be 216 pi. Find the volume bounded by y equals x squared plus 1, y equals negative x plus 1, and x equals 1 around y axis. So go ahead and draw the graph first. Now does your graph look like this? Okay, that's the shaded region we we have, and we're rotating about the uh, the y-axis. Now um, the question is now if it's rotating about the y-axis, what method should I be using? Because it uh, seems like I could be using washer method or the shell method. Which one is better? Uh, which one will give me uh, a better uh, solution? Because remember again, these are different ways to find the volume, and uh, just depends on. Whichever is convenient, you can use the dish, the disk method, the washer method, or the cylinder method, whichever one is appropriate as well as convenient. So let's see. If you were to do the washer method, right? You know there is going to be a hole. That much we know. So uh, if it, if there is a hole, then it's between washer method or the shell method. Okay. So I'll just write here. When rotated. The solid has a hole, or it's it's hollow. I'll just write hole. Okay, that means it is washer versus the shell method. It's any one of them, whichever one is going to work. So let's let's think about this. If it is washer method, you see that you actually have three functions, right? You have the parabola, the blue, and the and the green uh, lines. Therefore, you'll have to break this up into two parts. And uh, because it's uh, revolving around the y-axis, you know, you have to rewrite all these equations in terms of uh, y, meaning you have to solve them for x, each one of them. This is x equals 1, so that is good. But you have to rewrite this as um, x equals um, negative y plus 1. And this one, you'll have to write y plus 1 with a square root, so plus or minus. So you have all these complications there. Okay. So washer method means you need to break up into two parts since there are three functions. And because it's rotating about the y-axis, plus rewrite the equations. For x, meaning you have to solve them for x so that it's all written in terms of y. That's the case with washer. What happens with shell? Well, with shell, uh, you are trying to rotate about the y-axis, which means you can keep x equals 1 as the bound. Okay. And just use the other two functions, right? The the pink, the parabola, and the green line as the other two functions, as the top minus bottom function, to um, to evaluate it. So use this as the bound, and use the other two functions as top function minus bottom function. So you'll have to kind of reason it out. There is no immediate way to know. You can just have to reason it out to know which method will uh, be a better choice. So if you think of um, this uh, situation here, we see that the shell method reigns. It seems to be the better choice. And so we go from 0 to 1, okay, because I'll be keeping that as a bound. It's 0 to 1. Okay. 
it's all uh, because it's rotating about the y axis it's done with respect to x that's why we are keeping um, the limits uh, from 0 to 1 conveniently that's why we said use x as the bound 2 pi x f of x dx but because of the whole remember because it's not um, it's not um, hugging the x axis in this case it's not hugging the y axis we do have to consider washer part wholly you know so the washer part would be the top function minus the bottom function so the top function will be your parabola minus the green line top function and that will be the parabola and this is the line the green line not the blue line blue serves as the bound And that will be x squared plus 1 minus negative x plus 1. Again, the good news is that we don't have to rewrite your given function in any other way because it's already with respect to x. So that's 2 pi integral 0 to 1 x times x squared plus 1 plus x minus 1 dx. Things get simplified there. Those go away. Distribute the x, you get x cubed plus x squared dx. And then it's a breeze. x power 4 over 4 plus x cubed over 3, 0 to 1. 1 power 4 over 4. That gives us 2 pi 1 over 4 plus 1 over 3. That will be 7 over 12, right? That will be 7 pi over 6. And that's our answer here for this problem. So that's uh, pretty much uh, the ones I wanted to show you. There are some additional problems that I have um, worked out and I've posted as PDF files in. Uh, in our course in a canvas shell so you can check it out there uh, but um, what I'm trying to uh, indicate here is that you have different ways of approaching these problems and sometimes uh, you know they, they, it might ask you to do some critical thinking to the problem so that you decide whether to split it up into different portions if that is quicker or if it is uh, easier to do the shell method by incorporating washer style into it where you do the outer radius minus the inner radius and so on. Also, you need to watch out where the where the axis of rotation is. Is the axis of rotation the x-axis itself or the y-axis itself? Or is it away from it, in which case you'll have to account for it in your um, for your radius. You'll have to subtract it or you have to add to it, depending on where it is. Okay. So that's it, class. And uh, with that, uh, we uh, wind up our um, course here. What we also uh, have is um, surface area and uh, arc length you know these are uh, also part of this section but I'm not touching them now because we'll be going over them again in calculus 2 so uh, that's the reason why I'm saving it for later because uh, you will uh, you know it's better for you to recall then when you will see it uh, being used more so uh, so it's been a wonderful uh, journey here uh, doing uh, calculus with you and I will hope to see you again uh, in Calculus 2 as we continue this uh, learning and as we learn to master calculus. Thank you again, class. You've been wonderful. I will see you soon.